nous inaugurons aujourd'hui notre programme spécial NIF Extended, qui est donc un symposium sur quatre jours dédié à la création digitale, à l'innovation audiovisuelle et à la littérature. Donc les deux premiers jours, qui sont regroupés dans Imaging the Future, se consacrent vraiment sur l'innovation, la création digitale, les effets visuels, effets spéciaux, les jeux vidéo. Et nous avons aujourd'hui un programme vraiment de haute volée avec deux, deux régions qui sont vraiment à la pointe de la création numérique, avec Taïwan et le Québec, enfin pays, des régions, pardon. Euh, à 11h30, mais peut-être avec un peu de retard aussi, vu que nous avons commencé en retard, nous aurons une présentation des quatre installations immersives taïwanaises qui sont présentées au Muséum d'Histoire Naturelle de Neuchâtel et qui sont vraiment de belles... De Enfin, d'excellents de, de, projets à la fois technologiques et qui thématisent la question de notre rapport à la nature. Donc nous aurons avec nous et à distance euh, les producteurs et créateurs de ces projets pour nous, pour nous les présenter. À 14h, nous aurons une passionnante discussion autour de la virtual production et les moyens que cette nouvelle technologie et méthode de travail offre, que ce soit autant dans les grands projets que dans les projets plus modestes. Et à 4 heures, nous aurons euh, donc ce passionnant, euh, cette passion de discussion autour de la créativité numérique à Québec. Et nous aurons vraiment des intervenants euh, très prestigieux, donc j'espère que vous pourrez y participer. Mais tout de suite, nous avons, enfin, je vous propose de nous plonger et d'aller à Taïwan et de découvrir en fait, l'incroyable vitalité et la créativité numérique. Euh, c'est vrai que c'est une région qui s'est démarquée depuis quelques années dans les, dans, dans les nouvelles technologies et dans, la, dans les récits immersifs. Et nous avons avec nous à distance euh, trois personnalités pour nous en parler. Tout d'abord Estella Valdivieso Chun, productrice à Serendipity Films, qui euh, depuis plusieurs années est sélectionnée euh, dans des festivals très importants avec des projets ambitieux qui sont parfois aussi des coproductions internationales et qui euh, cette année est représentée aussi au NIF avec deux projets. Euh, donc vous en apprendrez un peu plus. Avec nous également à distance Grace Lee, qui est une productrice et programmatrice au Kaohsiung Film Festival et qui a vraiment suivi le pouce et les impulsions de la création numérique à Taïwan depuis quelques années et qui sera en live depuis Kaohsiung, justement au sud de l'île. Ainsi que le consultant de Taïka, Aurélien Dirlet, euh, qui a, avant de travailler à Taïka, donc le Taiwan Content Creative Agency, était également très impliqué dans les ponts et connexions entre la France et Taïwan pour créer et amener des projets justement de ces deux pays pour stimuler la, la création numérique. Et qui, euh, depuis, est un consultant euh, étatique, disons, pour euh, accentuer la promotion de, de la création taïwanaise. Et pour modérer ces passionnantes personnalités, nous avons avec nous Laetitia Boschu, qui nous a fait l'honneur d'accepter cette modération. Laetitia est donc la directrice de Visual Switzerland et promeut la créativité numérique et les œuvres immersives en Suisse et ailleurs. Et vraiment une sommité sur ces questions-là, donc on est vraiment très chanceux de l'avoir avec nous. Et je vous invite donc à l'applaudir et à l'accueillir sur scène. have to put on the headset, right? Hello, everyone. Hi. Do you hear me in Taiwan? No. Yes? Do you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me well? Okay. Yes. 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 Hi. Very well. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Stella. Hi, Grace. And hi, Aurélien. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank you for the public and thank you to the NIF as well for having me today. So we speak about Taiwanese creation today. Um, it's, it's a very thrilling and a bit industry in Taiwan. And here, when we hear of China, we often think of Taiwan because you've been at the, for, the forefront of the XR scene quite some while ago uh, in 2017 already when we were in Switzerland only beginning to think about virtual reality and the likes. Why have you been so um, avant-garde in this field? What made the market so avant-garde, do you think? Nobody wants to answer? Grace, <laughs> yes, you want to go ahead? I can start, I can start. Hi, yes, yes. everyone. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm, it's, first of all, I want to thank you for being here and inviting us to this. And I think, um, I think one of the key that happened in 2017 is definitely that 
Gaoshong Film Archive happened. Gaoshong Film Archive created a VR lab <laughs> and really encouraged uh, producers like me and uh, directors like John to uh, think about what we can do with uh, the medium and uh, wh wh how we can create a narrative in the medium. And so um, with that, really kind of uh, inspire uh, a lot of things. And uh, also, um, uh, I think with the island itself having this, uh, we're already very hyperly connected with uh, internet and all this uh, online gaming activities. So really, uh, is I think it's kind of the perfect storm here that you know we can have people that are already very much uh, imagining like what uh, the future narrative could be like and uh, and uh, and with what Kaohsiung Film Archive did at the time kind of just push us all into uh, the scene. Fantastic. And, I and guess it's my turn. Yes? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Elena. Okay. Hi, Estela, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. My name is Grace Lee. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, so yeah, just uh, like Estela says, um, uh, I, I'm a film producer, but uh, I joined Kaohsiung Film Archive around like three years ago. Uh, so Kaohsiung Film Archive is a film organization based in the second biggest city of Taiwan, the south biggest city of uh, Taiwan, Kaohsiung. And usually, uh, we start promoting from a feature and short film very, very long times ago. And that's why we see the potential that we, we feel uh, if we uh, foreign the young creators, there, there is a lot of potential in this. So back into the 2017, uh, there's, it's actually everything start from that. Also with Ophelian, I would say it's a very beautiful coincidence because uh, at the beginning, we actually really don't know what will happen and it ends. It's just a, a very simple idea. We noticed that there is a, a, a topic and everyone in the film industry is talking about uh, can virtual reality being a new, new way of storytelling. And lots of major film festivals like Cannes, Sundance, Tribeca, they set up the, uh, the category in the festival to showcase the, this kind of work. So we just have the ideas that why why don't we ask, uh, invite some of the Taiwan director to do it? And so we invite uh, Estella and Zhang to do their first VR work, Your Spiritual Temple Sucks. And this this work is really a kickoff work for Taiwan uh, SR. I think because the uh, uh, in the end the result uh, getting very well. So like at the at the time. Um, People think my thinking like, oh, maybe this is really a, a opportunity for Taiwan, and also we get a chance to connect and work um, more with uh, internationally. So uh, right now we can see like actually like uh, 2017 until today is only four years, but I think uh, lots of things happening in these years, and we can definitely see a lot of. Uh, uh, things happening and no matter like public fundings and also private company is putting a lot of resource into these fails. So um, I think, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I think we are in a good direction to uh, encourage this of the uh, this e ecosystem. So I, yeah, in this past, we are uh, playing an important role in our path. So I think he, he's also have definitely something to share. Um, yeah, thank you, Grace. Um, yes, indeed, like uh, I joined Taika in September 2020, but um, I've been, you know, a big part of my job in the past five years since I've been appointed in Taiwan has been trying to connect the French and Taiwanese XR ecosystem. And when we started thinking about this, which was like uh, late 2016, um, Taiwan already had a very strong ecosystem, but mostly on the hardware side. And it was very difficult for us, like when I was working for the French government, to find partners, because this is the way we work. We need, you know, before all, you need a platform, you need a partner to, you know, create a conversation, create a discussion. And I would say that I totally agree with what Estela said, like the luck of Taiwan, uh, really has been to have, um, you know, Gaoxiong 
not only because they did produce uh, the artworks very early, but because they established themselves as a, as a platform for XR. So that's also a space that, you know, like we could bring uh, all those professionals from Europe, from France. At that time, 2016, it's, it's uh, a lot of the content going to festivals is coming from um, French-based studios. So we could bring a lot of people who've been working on this medium for quite some time. And, you know, this is a very new medium with grammar um, being like perfected. And so um, we could really start connecting those people. And, and, and again, Gaoxiang has been um, a, a very important place to have those conversations. And, and indeed, like it started four years ago, but a lot of things happen. And, and that's thanks to uh, such platforms, but also other festivals, even if it's been uh, uh, not as big and, and but like you know any opportunity to work with people who, who are willing to you know engage in such conversation i think it helped a lot to to reach that uh, stage today where taiwan uh, indeed does appear as one of the major player not only not just for the tech you know the hardware of uh, aspects of vr but also for content Yes, Aurélien, since you know the European market very well, and, and you all do, actually, because you've been selected and you've been traveling around festivals. So, um, Aurélien, which event or um, physical space would be the closest to Ta Kaohsiung in, in the Western world? Would it be... W is there one in Europe? Because I would probably go more west to Canada, and it would be the fee uh, center in Montreal. But um, I don't know if we have a similar place here in, in Europe. What would you say? Of course. I mean, I if we think in terms of venue, uh, yes, the fee center is a very important uh, international venue for for XR. Uh, in terms of festivals, those which have played a role very early are Sundance, Tribeca. But in Europe, we do have one in Paris called New Images. And actually, they started you know, building those bridges like together with Gaoxiang. So uh, that started, I would say, three years ago with a residency program financed by Gaoxiang, which allows like a French creator to come to Taiwan and develop a project for a few months. And with the support of the, you know, like the the Gaoxiang Film Archive and, and the ecosystem in close contact with the ecosystem. Um, so I would say, yeah, yeah, this uh, this event in particular uh, would be the closest to to Gaoxiang, and actually they do have a very strong ties. Um, with Taika, we've also uh, started a new program together with New Images, which is called the XR Days. And the idea is um, to connect French and Taiwanese professionals and to accelerate the opportunities for cooperation and, 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 and business. Um, this is really like a, a program which takes place two times per year, like in June, one day before New Images. We select 10 Taiwanese talents and we Supposedly, if we can travel, we do send them to Paris, and uh, and they spend you know like one full day in close contact with French professionals, and then when the festival starts, the day after, like they can connect with the entire world, and in return, like the idea is that we will select ten French professionals, and they will attend TCCF, which is the uh, festival and market of Taika for creative content in November, and we do the same thing. Those ten talents, uh, we we will get to 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 connect with the the ecosystem. And the idea is to continue to do um, something uh, which I've been doing with all those partners uh, and Gaoshung especially that I've mentioned before, um, before joining Taika, which is to connect people because this is really the key, especially for this kind of medium. What matters is to really connect uh, as many people as you can. And, and, and basically, uh, my job before joining Taika has been to, you know, bring almost the entire French ecosystem to Taiwan and to let them discover how complete, you know, like how powerful um, this uh, ecosystem is. And also that this is not just about tech, but also about creativity, because there are lots of great creative minds. And also Taiwan is a great partner for international co-production. So this is also something that um, we tried to highlight. And, and now that there is Taika, which is a very young agency because the agency is less than two years old, um, but this is very different because now there is an agency at national 
government level. So that means we can create, you know, more tools, more platforms, and work with all the partners to actually, you know, like make this uh, create a system to connect people. And that's what we try to do with the XR days and, and new images. Okay, thank you. And Grace and Estella, what's your take on the interna internationalization of, of the Taiwanese scene? Uh, we, you've been touring the festivals, you've been quite successful as well with um, your works, Estella and, and Grace as well, with um, Kaohsiung being um, really a highlight of the Chinese subcontinent. So what's your, what's your take of, you know, about <coughs> co-production and internationalization? Um, I think the, the, the co-production, do you remember like the three of us, the very, because yeah. Aurelio was mentioning new <laughs> images earlier, and it reminded me the very beginning of how the three of us worked together at the very first year when we had New Spiritual Temple Sucks. We, the three of us went to Paris all together to attend new images. And uh, what we had mutually in mind, we, we believe that the next step for Taiwanese content is to collaborate internationally. It's very important for us to find a project to establish that. So we went there with a mutual goal, meeting with different people and saying like, hey, let's do a Taiwan and French co-production in VR. And to show that there is this co collaboration possibility and how we can uh, as a demonstration so we meet with uh, a lot of uh, producers that actually uh, uh, you know in the past few years we really did uh, work on uh, projects together such as uh, uh, mechanical souls with digital rise and now uh, I just finished another project uh, missing picture timing land with Atlas 5 so these are uh, these are all results of that of you of us being there and saying, okay, how do we find resources that we can put together to uh, create uh, content? And because the the um, the rules of different uh, uh, administration are very, uh, it's very different. And Taiwan, uh, the kind of resource I can get is probably something that um, not quite the same as the European market. So uh, communication and establishing this kind of relationship of uh, exchanging information was a very important part. And uh, that's why I'm like, you know, very excited that NIF is doing this right now because that, that is how everything kind of starts. I is, I, think, I believe, like a conversation first, and then how do we connect these people? How do who are the people that we can speak to to understand the market? And I think that uh, for international co-production, that's the the key. Uh, people that are willing to share and understand, uh, help each other understand what's going on in their own territory. Yes, because we've spoken about France. You each have yeah. um, a French link somehow, Aurelien, it's quite obvious, but Estella, you have been working extensively with, um, with some, some French producers as well, and Grace, you have been working with um, Louis from Vroom. So the ties with France are quite obvious, but the ties with Switzerland are, are not that existent. Um, what what is your take on the Swiss XR market? Do you know of um, any? You know, are you aware of it? Do we speak about it in Taipei, uh, in Taiwan in general? I know Ellen Kuo. You must know her as well, uh, who is um, a, a great yeah. um, exporter of, of Swiss XR. But what's your what's your view on the um, on the Swiss XR market? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, to be honest, it's not so uh, as so big as we know. Yeah, but uh, there's definitely have something, something interesting project I have seen, like uh, the project VRI. Yes, yeah. from Zhizhaban. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so um, I think, I think, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it's not so many productions going on, but, but it still have something interesting is happening. And I think I think for lots of country right now is uh, is like this like there is some very like little people niche people uh, they got interesting in this field uh, so they say so they work on it so that's why that's why right now we need uh, international production so much right now because for my for my feeling is that every in every country we we have very like a tiny group people but have 
a special passion on this file. And so we like we need to work together mm-hmm. and build up this ecosystem uh, uh, together. So uh, in, in, instead of uh, thinking of the countryside, we I think the XR community, we always thinking about it's a, a inter- international and worldwide community. We we'll always work together. And and like you mentioned, uh, Kaohsiung uh, is a very, I think it, it's a very unique uh, organization that we uh, involved in different roles role and fail in XR ecosystem. Like uh, we do have a uh, talent for spring uh, assistant project funding and we do have our festival and we have our own venue. But uh, somehow we know the most important thing is production funding because nothing else is more real than the people can do one production. So that's why when we met Estella and we know uh, uh, there is a chance we can do a co-production, so we push it very hard to make this happen because like uh, nothing else better than the content speak itself. And as the, as the experience we learn from now is like uh, production, they travel around the world. And somehow it's like they were linked to the people we never thought about it. Like some people from like Dubai or or New York send us the message that like, oh I saw one of your content. I saw your your spiritual temple site. It's really great. So yeah, it's it's quite amazing for doing that. Yes, and you spoke about funding, Grace, um, twice already. I think that the funding mechanism in Taiwan is quite um, it's, is, is, is quite strong, it seems to me. You have the Ministry of Culture supporting the Taika, right? And um, you have also HTC being very involved in your productions. Who else is very active in the funding and in the supporting? Uh, on the funding side, I think there are uh, actually different kind of grants that you can kind of uh, utilize uh, creatively, I think. Like, so obviously, Kaohsiung provides grants, and then Taika has an immersive grant. But within the Ministry of Culture, there are actually a lot of grants that are uh, um, for technology content. So it's for very, it's very much a new, new media kind of uh, uh, grants that uh, that can be applied for different size of projects, maybe smaller size or bigger, and then based on theme as well. So uh, as we know that X, the whole XR scene is uh, very broad, it's not only uh, you know filmmaking or only animation making. There's also a, a, a collaboration with theater or music there are those kind of brands that also um, kind of support uh, um, people from those uh, scenes to work in uh, XR field. So for example, that I have uh, another project that Song Within Us, that I was able to also get resources from the Ministry of Culture to build uh, the experience, mostly because that it was a story about uh, um, uh, indigenous music music and uh, and the discovery of their um, their home and so in that sense that you we were able to find grants from the ministry of culture to support that so uh, the way that i i i would say is that i'm very happy that i'm here in taiwan that um i think that um the general policy for uh uh immersive content is it's it's quite uh, broad and quite wide range. There are different kind of uh, grants that we can utilize. It's really determining on what's the theme of uh, the what you want to do and whether it's a good and creative use of the medium. So there is a political stance to really support new digital content and creation, right? That's what you feel as well, Aurélien, in Taiwan, and that's what yes. helped you in Taiwan? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, that's exactly, yeah, that's what helped me in Taiwan. Um, yeah, I mean, Estela is absolutely right. Like, there are, like, some programs and some fundings which are absolutely specific to VR, to XR, but there are also other programs which could apply to other, you know, like, type of content. 
but for which uh, XR project would be eligible. So at Taika, we have the uh, immersive grant, which is uh, in its second year. It's a 130,000 USD uh, grant for projects uh, which are funded um, with already 30% of funding in place. So this obviously is targeting like um, international important uh, XR works. But we have like a different other mechanism, like there was a mechanism called the flagship um, uh, flagship project grant uh, in the past, uh, which could apply to pretty much any type of content. And technology, as Estela said, is very important. And I think this is what is very interesting uh, in Taiwan right now. Because at the beginning, uh, everything was very much, like everyone's attention was very much focused on the hardware. And then, like a few people, you know, like Estella and and Grace, and, and and then like with government support, like pushed for content. And now I think that um, we are all pushing for something that at Taika we call future content. And I think this is what is exciting: is that we are building new tools for the content of tomorrow. And when we discuss with other, you know, like uh, a few weeks ago, I was discussing with um, some counterparts from other. Uh, national film funds about uh, XR funding. And I feel that, you know, pretty much only in Taiwan, we have a vision and a commitment and resources to invest in the content of tomorrow. So this is something that, you know, like if you have a 5G project, I think we're building the tools at Taika to fund such projects, which could be, you know, proof of concept for 5G, uh, future content or proof of business as well. Um, but also like, you know, any other type of content. And I think this is very important because, um, you know, since 2016 and until I would say 2020, we've seen a lot of VR content in major festivals. But this content comes from, you know, uh, those studios created by people with audiovisual background. They come from film, they come from documentary, they come from television. And of course, they created the new language and they perfected the grammar of this medium. But I feel that since, um, you know, last year, and, and especially with the current crisis, um, we see a lot of people coming from different industries and trying to use, you know, technology to tell um, uh, different stories. And I think this is what we should pay attention to right now. Because, um, you know, like in the past few years, you would say uh, most of the great VR content has been coming from uh, Canada, France, uh, Taiwan, of course. But now I feel like um, in the US, there are a lot of people experimenting with those new tools coming from um, live performance. And I'm not saying dance, because we've seen a lot of the art pieces like, which, which you know, revolve about uh, dance. But I would say like theater. And we need to pay attention to what those people have been doing. And we, we need to tell them and convince them that like there is room for them, you know, to join and, and join the discussion, the conversation, and that we need the inputs and we need the vision and we will provide them with the resources. So I think this is what is interesting in Taiwan right now, that we try to provide those resources to all those people, not just to, you know, tech people or audiovisual people, but we really try to think in terms of how can we tell different stories in different ways. Okay, so th th when, when we um, hear about Taiwan, and of course, we think of China. Is Taiwan like the Hollywood of China somehow? Is it because it's not linked to movies like Hollywood is or Bollywood in India, but both um, those geographic areas in in Los Angeles and and in Kerala uh, and and um, above in India, they they became the XR hotspot of their countries. Is it the same now in China with Taiwan becoming the hotspot of these content productions and, and being the highlight of it? Mm. No? Because I, I don't know <laughs> of the, the mainland scene, really. I know more well, of the uh, Taiwanese yeah. scene than the mainland. Or you cannot speak for the start. mainland, and you can only s sure. speak for Taiwan. <laughs> I, okay, I can start. I think, you know, let's go back to, um, let's go back to movies. Um, everyone for the past, everybody for the past 10 years, even more, has been looking at China. 
Uh, let's take France. Like we signed a co-production agreement with China about 10 years ago. It's, well, I won't go into too much details, but you know, the situation is very different. So it's been pretty much like complicated. So what is interesting is that um, I think the, the timing is really interesting, what is happening in Taiwan right now, because more and more people in my previous job, when I was still working for the French government, um, like more and more people came to me and asked me like, okay, like we've been developing projects with China for the past few years, it's been complicated and we, we, we really need to um, like explore, like are there other places, if other opportunities to develop like Chinese speaking content? And Taiwan actually uh, offers this possibility. If you look at uh, major platforms, OTT players, such as, uh, I don't know, like Netflix, Fox, HBO, like they, they, they don't have access to the Chinese market, but they do produce content, Chinese speaking content in Taiwan because they do okay. need this content. And okay. you need different content which can travel. And for VR, I think it's, it's, um, it's very interesting because like there is this uh, opportunity, you know, like uh, what I used to say is, 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 you know, Taiwan is much more compatible uh, Taiwan, like Taiwan is, is the ideal place to do co-production because it, it is very close to the European system in terms of the financing, in terms of how people work, uh, in terms of how welcoming it is, in terms of the public support. And this is what we see in VR. And I think this is what, uh, this is why, and this is what uh, made Taiwan, um, you know, like such an important partner in such a short time. And what, you know, Estella was talking about the first co-production, like when we went to Paris and, and what we all had in mind is that we need to, um, uh, you know, like do the first VR co-production between Taiwan and France. And that was my goal. And that was everyone's goal, like uh, for the three of us, because that was our proof of concept. And that happened so quickly compared to film, compared to television. So now we actually use this as an example. Like in my everyday job, I can tell you, you know, when, when I talk to people like from the TV industry, I say, look at what we did with XR. It took us two years, less than two years, to convince the world that Taiwan is a great co-production partner in Asia. And actually, if you want Chinese speaking content, this is the only partner you have. And this is the okay. best. So this is, yeah, very interesting. I, I'm not sure I would, you know, look at Taiwan as, um, you know, Taiwan uh, being the Hollywood of China, but definitely, like, Taiwan is, is a pretty interesting, like, partner in the region. Yes, that's how we, that's how we see it as well, you know. Um, and, and I'm glad that you're at the, at the NIF for that purpose and reason, because we don't know much um, Besides, uh, of course, I've seen many Taiwanese work, but I think that it's still unknown that there is such a thriving scene in in um, Taiwan um, outside, you know, the XR community. But uh, you, you have made a, a name for yourself, and and I want to know what is the influence? What are your influences? For example, Estella as um, as a producer, as a film. Um, director as well. What what's your influence? I know you've been working in the past with Ang Lee, who is a world acclaimed director. Um, what has film taught you for the XR career you are now developing, and what are the people you look up to, or perhaps not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. No, I look up to a lot of people. <laughs> I'm always, uh, uh, this is one of the things that when I, when the Spiritual Temple Socks went to uh, Sundance and I was very excited because, you know, first time you really have something that you produce and go to such a major festival. And uh, I remember John and I was like watching every VR production there because we we're curious what other people did. And this, this was our very first time doing VR. So I'm the kind of person that I will go to the, I will, I will watch until the end of the credit, until the last minute of the credit to see who are the players, because that's what, that's what made me, uh, uh, you know, give me imagination, give me a little bit more, what can I do if I want to keep producing VR? So I noticed uh, French was a very uh, uh, important role in the ex international XR scene. 
at that time. And that's kind of the reason that led to new images. And that's kind of how we um, really start, uh, I, I start reaching out to those uh, production companies that we found that had really good experience in VR, really we can learn from. I learned, I, I, I enjoy this co-production process because of that, because that I realized that if I work with people that has already produced work that I really enjoy, I will learn from them as well. And if we have to trace uh, further back into my uh, experience, I I studied film. I I got into uh, working with uh, Tai Ming Liang and Ang Lee, one very art house, one very commercial director. It gave me a, a range of understanding things in a very you know how production can be done in so many different ways. I think that gave me that imagination to apply into a virtual reality production seeing like okay there are certain things that we can do that come from film production film financing these are what people are doing for uh, co-production in 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 europe and uh, we we are not uh, hollywood so we don't have that uh, financial structure like in the u.s how do we build a partnership with with the european uh, companies to uh for, for vr that's similar to what the europeans produce films uh, so that was uh, that was uh, one one part of it and then as and then you continue and say okay what what else can we do can we have art uh, creatives that work together to help because VR is such is such a new thing that it is the market is such a uh, a non-territory. What can we do when we are building the team to um, help us uh, to 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 build a distribution possibility or marketing possibility for the content itself? The partners are more important than me knowing everything because I, I I'm here in Taiwan. I'm you know in some I'm in the island, <laughs> and uh, we we need to be able to. Um, Find those key partners around in order to know how we can how we can uh, build something that can travel more, because one of the key issue that um, Oreo was also uh, talking about is that you know um, I think that for Chinese uh, speaking content that's we we need to think bigger too because there's a, also a very big. Uh, territory around uh, the Chinese speaking world. How do we build content that's also for the rest of the world and be connected to them? I think that's one one of the very um, like big mission that I, I always have in mind to when I'm producing my projects. And it's very strategic because then on one side you have the international market and on the other side you have this huge Chinese market and I find it um, quite interesting for you to uh, be in the, m the middle piece, right? And, and here in Europe, we're quite scattered in terms of um, the influential hub. There is no influential hub. Uh, w one might say it's, it's Paris or it's, you know, it's, it, it might be um, um, Germany or Holland or even Finland with Hel Helsinki, but it's, it's quite um, divided here, whereas in Taiwan, we find a strong hub that can shine the light of China over um, on the international scene. And I, I had um, um, a question for you, Grace, because um, at Kaohsiung, you are funding immersive content, and most of it, at, at least those I have um, experienced and seen, are quite artsy. How do you make your choice and why um, not go super mainstream like others have? Or do you want to be um, seen as, as, as quite artsy and, and, and still in a way avant-garde? Um, yeah. Let me know a bit more about it. Well, <laughs> uh, Sure, sure. I, yeah, I think it's an interesting question because um, I don't know if it's because our background, because we, we all come from film uh, industry before. So naturally, we, I think uh, our, our interesting thing is about like the storytelling. Like myself, um, uh, before I watch uh, VR contents, I, I 
I don't know nothing about it, but there's definitely some VIPs uh, persuade me that this media is totally uh, great and, and uh, amazing. Like uh, I, I remember the first day when I joined Kaohsiung Film Archive, my, I watched your spiritual tank socks <laughs> in my office. And like, like, that feeling is like, it opens my mind like, oh my God, um, can the, the 360 ways for storytelling, it's so much interesting. And of course, I have seen lots of uh, interesting piece uh, later in, in a career, like some of the, uh, one of the, one of the biggest one we know is that Nose of Blindness is from French, uh, is from French uh, works. Yeah, it's like a textbook for everyone <laughs> in VR community you need to watch. And also like Dear Angelica is from uh, U USA, it's pro a production from Pixar. And so oh, this kind of production persuades me about this media is really exciting and, and really, yeah, it's really exciting. So um, when we collaborate with creators, we actually don't uh, limit they, uh, what, do they, what do they want to do. Usually what we do is that we will help them to watch as much as the content they can. And we give them everything. It's like gaming, and a narrative thing, we give them all of it. But they they will come back afterwards. They they write their own screen. So uh, the role we play is not like they may him. It's usually we support him and guide him to to um, to help him finish the work he wants to create. So okay. so I think yeah. So um. Yeah, so definitely we, 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 because we don't live anything, so, so it's very interesting from, to see your point of view. It's very arty piece, <laughs> but we, we, I think it's very naturally thing. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah, your but, taste. But yeah. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, <laughs> but I definitely agree about what Ophelia mentioned. Yeah. It's where... Um... Uh, when I jump in this bell, sorry. Yes, do you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yeah, it yeah. broke for yes. a few yes. seconds. Don't worry. Okay. 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 And and okay. To, um, thank uh, okay. you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. For to to yeah. wrap up, since yeah. we're in Switzerland and we have mainly spoken about about the, the, the French Taiwanese ties. What could we do here in Switzerland to increase this pan-Chinese, pan-Asian uh, collaboration and, and co-production spirits? May I? <laughs> yes, yes, go ahead. Let's make this happen yeah. because this is the same thing that this is the same thing we did, right? We did with the French, that's how it happened. And yeah. now we do this. We sit here and then there are a bunch of um, audience here, I imagine. So I invite the audience. <laughs> Let's talk about this with the audience. Um, so uh, the idea is that we really just uh, need to uh, introduce each other because I am, I, I, I'm here all the way in Taiwan. We need to know more about what's going on with uh, in Switzerland, of course, and also we need to know who are the players in Switzerland and who are the creatives, who are the companies and the producers, and um, we need to be introduced. <laughs> I think that's the the the. The, the first step for sure, like uh, we can, ex you know, can have a lot of uh, discussion of exchanging what's going on there because like one of the key thing is uh, for international collaboration is the the stories that we uh, we are interested in. We need to find that mutual voice and that only can happen by uh, getting to know each other and find each other. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like dating. <laughs> we need to find partners that uh, that has the same taste, and then we can work on something together, and uh, also understand the the financial structure in Switzerland to know how we can put resources together. And I think that's uh, definitely the next step for us. Yes, and I think that's more complicated yeah, than with the uh, EU actually. 
we have a, a funding structure that is a bit complicated mm. and, and a bit less generous, I would say. If um, I can, you know, if anybody is listening to me, fund, fund, <laughs> fund the XR community, that would be lovely. Yes, that's um, fine. Yes. yes. And how do you foresee the future? So it's going to be... Yeah, we need to find ways. I think yes, yes, right? I, I have IDs, I have co-production IDs. So um, I will probably get back to you. But um, <laughs> yes, you know, it's, it's, it's also a matter of understanding. Okay. You have the, you, the, I've seen that in many Taiwanese peas, HTC plays a, a strong role, obviously, and we don't have a hardware actor, you know, in a, a Swiss hardware actor. And I guess that makes also for a big difference in the sponsoring. Um, don't you don't you feel that perhaps sometimes? Yes, well, no, I, not I, really I actually. Yeah, that's good yeah, debate. I not like really. That. I, I can <laughs> share my personal experience. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, because like uh, for all all my productions, most of them that you see in a lineup, I only have one that was uh, collaborated with uh, with HTC. That was Mr. Buddha, but yeah. that was a HTC production. So I was more providing a service to support the project. So in terms of a lot of the productions that I produced, actually wasn't really uh, uh, collaborated. With uh, with HTC was actually a lot of other resources that we were able to to build up and international partners. So okay. I I am um, my personal experience is that obviously it's great to have you know uh, uh, hardware uh, companies to provide some support. We also have Acer. I I had some. Uh, some hardware support from Acer for mechanical soles back then, but you know it's not uh, totally impossible to produce something without uh, without them. Uh, I think uh, one of the key is that, like I said at the beginning when we started this, there wasn't high cost immersive grants. There were dedicated to VR. When we started, there was only very, you know, only grants that said you know technology related or stuff like that. So we were. We look into them and see what we can do with those grants to create possibilities for international collaborations. Those are not designed for international co-productions either, but because the fact that I, we, we think that uh, international collaboration will help the production. Uh, so then we find uh, we getting to understand how we can make it happen. I think that can that would be a, a same task for uh, producers uh, over there to look into your grants and see what are the possibilities for the collaborations and how can we utilize the resource as a, uh, as a combination and open up uh, territories. Because for my content, it's going to be hard for me to you know, be there to have to, to explore what uh, the local um, uh, market could be. But with a co-producer there, with somebody there, we'll be able to, to, to find those possibilities. Thank you. So it, it, it leaves us with a little less complex <laughs> on the hardware front and, uh, and <laughs> with many, many um, opportunities yeah. at the horizon of co-production with Taiwan, I think, and with France anyway, because um, we have people here in the public from France as well. Um, so yes, any, any word for the wrap up of um, and concluding this session? Do you want to add anything, Aurélien, Grace, Estella? No? Personally, yes. I would really just uh, stress what uh, Estella said, like what matters if you want to build something is the networking. It's really connecting people. So you need to find one platform and it can be your festival and you need to make sure that people get to meet here. And that also this is a tip I give to a lot of People like be open-minded. Like uh, as Estella said, we're in Taiwan. This is an island, and 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 I think it works for people when they don't limit themselves to what they know. You know what what is just here. You need to be uh, you know to 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 meet as many different people um, as you can because that that is eventually how you will find people or technologies or tools which will inspire you. 
and help you to tell you know this story that you want to tell in your own way so that's that's the first step it's to have a platform and then you build the tools you know it's programs and the exchange can be uh, residencies can be funding and then there is you know like uh as Estela said, like Taika appeared two years ago, and that's like I would say the third stage. It's government support. Of course, if you get yeah. government support very early, uh, like what we did, what, what we had in France, that's that's how um, things started uh, so early in France. Is because public television, Arte, France Television, and 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 CNC, the, the national uh, uh, film center. Um, like they all supported this type of content very early, but that can come later. Really, when I look back, uh, you know, the past four to five years, what mattered in Taiwan, it really is like those people who connected and, and who met and connected and, and, and started and, and produced those great projects. So reaching out is the, um, is the word of, the, of this conclusion, I guess, to reach out from island to island, because we are an island in Europe too, in Switzerland <laughs> somehow. So um, I will leave you, the three of you, and um, greetings, enjoy a lovely night. I'm looking forward to coming and visiting your country you. once, and it's a um, very exciting um, you know, scene, XR and more, the future, Future content, I like that one, Aurélien. So thank you very much, Estella. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Aurélien. And um, see you soon, here at the thank NIF you. or anywhere else. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.